So Fear and Hunger has no shortage of absolutely insane and really cool enemies. I thought it would be pretty cool just to make a relaxed video like this. Rating the enemies in Funga and ranking them in a tier list from best to worst. The rules need to be defined of what exactly best or worst is. I would say in the context of this horror RPG, which is the most effective enemy at being A, memorable and B, adding to the oppressive and scary atmosphere that the game is trying to go for. And starting from the beginning, we have the dog. So the dogs in Fear and Hunger basically make their grand appearance and for many people it's the first time they die in Funga. The cool thing about the dogs is that they basically set the tone for the rest of the game. Right from the get-go you realize just how brutal the combat is with these dogs. If you see this kind of dog in real life I don't know the name of the breed. I've seen this breed in real life at like the local park and it freaked me out. I I'd give them a B. Okay so next up we have the guard. Now the prison guards man the these guys, I, I mean, it's got to be an S tier, right? It's probably one of the most memorable encounters in Fear and Hunger, the first time you meet a god. They're so more powerful than you are, and if you don't know exactly what you're doing, they're going to kill you. They also, right from the get-go, show you just how uh, laissez-faire Miro is with uh, nudity in Fear and Hunger. So, yeah, these, uh, these enemies... Uh, occupy a special place in Fear and Hunger players' hearts. A lot of them are responsible for their first death. As soon as you encounter one, like, your curiosity is piqued. Like, what the hell is this? Why are, why are these enemies nude? And why do they do horrible things to my character? Yeah, they get an S. I forget the name of these things. Let's just say they're the jellyfish guys. These creatures are pretty cool. They look scarier than they are. Compared to what they can do in combat, like, at least if you just go for the head, you'll be fine. But for many players, like, they wouldn't know that and they'll attack the legs and, uh, yeah, it will be a long night. I'd say they're a B. Okay, so next up we have Trotter. I freaking love Trotter as a enemy in the game. The actual encounter, the actual battle against Trotter is a joke. Like, it's just one of the easiest enemies to fight in the game. The thing that makes Trotter so terrifying and such a great enemy isn't that. It's like the whole lore and backstory and what he does to you if you agree to be part of his uh, medical experiment. You get to understand what the darkness does to regular mortals over time. He really does add a lot. Now, I do know that it is based on the lore of Berserk. Like, they basically took the torture character from Berserk. At least the visuals and uh, maybe this guy out of it. It's in between an S and an A. Uh, I'd give it an S. The Cave Gnome, I mean, there's not much to say about these. These are just kind of like the swarm enemy. You know, they're kind of just in the way. They're just there to deplete your resources, basically. Not much to say about them. Let's see, ghouls? Yeah, ghouls are pretty cool. I, I like the ghouls. They're scary, but like, I mean, it is what it is. It's just like a, a zombie character, basically. Like, there's not much to it. And that's not really the fault of uh, Miro for designing it this way. Like, it's a zombie character. It's a, it's a creepy dungeon. There's going to be a zombie. So, I mean, I can't say it's bad or good. It's 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 a B. Moonless. Uh, Moonless is a cool encounter. Now, I'm not judging this on, like, a playable character, but, like, the actual combat encounter is really cool. Like, the fact that there's the option to give rotten meat to her and you can do it again and then you unlock a playable character that joins your party is really freaking cool. It really adds to like the intrigue and you get an appreciation of the seemingly useless items that you pick up in Fear and Hunger. I give it an A. Skeleton, I mean like the ghoul, there's not much to talk about, it's just the skelly boy. It, it is what it is. Chromola. Uh, it's an S. It's an S. I know that Chromola is based on Pyramid Head in the Silent Hill franchise. This is a theme with Miro. Like, he'll, he'll basically nab an idea from a different IP and make his own spin on it. What he did with Chromo is, is really freaking cool. This character stalks you throughout the game and just makes your life a living nightmare if you actually fight it. The peck ability just kills you instantly. It's, it's a brutal encounter. Probably the most recognizable character in Fear and Hunger. Like, it has to be an S. Everybody remembers Chromo. The Elite Guard. Oh, the Elite Guards are basically a beefier version, as you can imagine, of the regular god. They're a lot more intimidating, I'll say that much. When you think of a fear and hunger enemy, you think of the regular god as opposed to the elite god. It doesn't get the elusive S rank. The Dark Priest. These guys are 
interesting. You can learn a bit about the lore from them if you try and talk to them. Aside from that, there's not much to say. They're okay. Salmon Snake. It's a unique encounter, and I think it's the only jump scare in Fear and Hunger. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe it's the only jump scare in Fear and Hunger where you're at this water and like this freaky looking axolotl or whatever you call jumps out of the water and tries to kill you like it's it's a really terrifying enemy i really like it i really like it you also get a, a shit ton of food from it i give it an a the witches the witches are interesting it's a bit strange when you get taken into the sinkhole and like you know you're kind of in like this nightmare dimension and uh, the witches attack you they're cool I i'd give it a b the knight armor i i don't know if that's the official name of them basically the suits of armor that attack you they're okay it's an animated suit of armor that attacks you it is what it is. Again, there's like some like enemies in this game which are just kind of like, they're fine, there's nothing wrong with them, but we've seen it before. Magical animated suits of armor have been a thing in role playing games for a while. So I give it a B. The Iron Shakespeare. The Iron Shakespeare looks intimidating, is intimidating, and is a really tough fight, but it's so freaking slow and huge that <laughs> Unless you really screw up with your pathing, you're not gonna fight Iron Shakespeare. But aside from that, like the backstory behind him is pretty cool. He's got a really cool design. He looks like Smo from Dark Souls. I give him an A. He's really cool. Ah, the Human Hydra. The Human Hydra is such a strange encounter because you think it's like there's some big significance to the Human Hydra, but like it's actually just a bunch of people that were desperate enough to try and get out of the dungeon. So they did the Sylvian marriage ritual and they all got fused together in this eldritch abomination ball of humans that are now trying to eat more humans. You can even feed the girl to it, which does absolutely nothing. You don't even get a thank you, I believe. Killing this gives nothing. Like there's no reason to kill it. It's literally a pointless encounter. It can provide you nothing except expending your resources. Just getting in combat and killing things is not the solution in Fear and Hunger. Like that isn't the answer to every problem. This is designed to teach you that and, you know, drill it into your head. But aside from that, the actual design of this is so freaking cool. I mean, some people that make Fear and Hunger videos, video essays, have put it in the thumbnail. So that's how you know it's a memorable enemy. I give it an A. Uh, the Harvest Man. Uh, it's got to be an S. It's an S. Such a creepy enemy. Like when I made my five creepiest enemies in Fear and Hunger video, this was in the thumbnail. Yeah, it, it's just got such a, a creepy vibe about it. The way you fight it and it doesn't even like attack you for a few rounds. It just gently pats your head. Yeah, you're just sitting there in anticipation for something absolutely horrible that's going to happen. And sure enough, something absolutely horrible happens to your character if you lose the coin flip attack. Such a creepy enemy. Uh, definitely an S. The God of Fear and Hunger. Yeah, it's a very cool boss fight. Okay, spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear about one of the endings of Fear and Hunger, the girl transforms into like these different phases and you get to see the girl mutate into like this eldritch abomination, the god of fear and hunger. And you get to see that progression in the different sprites. It's such a cool moment. It's so freaking freaky. I'm giving it an S. The Avatar of Sylvian. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool encounter. Uh, very spooky. Uh, you fight it in the, the void. I think it's a great encounter. Very cool enemy. Grogoroth, or at least the avatar of Grogoroth that you fight. I think it's the hardest encounter in Fear and Hunger 1, in my opinion. It's such a tough fight and it's really cool how Grogoroth gives you like the pretense of a fair fight. Like Grogoroth can just smite you instantly if he wants. If Nashra is in your party, he'll just like destroy him instantly but he'll give you a fair fight which is kind of like an interesting characterization he could absolutely one shot to you in a blink of an eye if he wanted to but he doesn't he kind of likes the fight he likes fighting you I i'd give him an a blight it's this creepy uh sightless t-rex basically pretty darn cool pretty darn cool but it's not the best francois francois yeah he's a he's an interesting character and you can basically gaslight him <laughs> in the fight itself it can be cheesed so easily by like gaslighting him but the fight itself is such an epic encounter it's like one of the most fun bosses in the game i'd give him an a uh the tormented one or chambara 
man, this fight is freaking creepy. Like the whole backstory of Chambara uh, is just terrifying. The way he's presented, like the the sprites, where he's just this guy that loves pain for the sake of it. Uh, it's just so freaking creepy. Yeah, amazing, amazing encounter. I give him a S. Valtiel. Valtiel's so weird. It's just this big mega mind head that you fight. <laughs> and the weird thing is he asks you trivia questions. If you get it right, you do a big amount of damage. It's a very strange fight. It doesn't really do much for me. Like I'm not a huge fan of Valtiel. Lady of the Moon. I think the Lady of the Moon is super freaking cool. The fact that she makes a deal or offers to repair your limbs and ailments and damage if you give her the girl because you know she's working for rare and rare wants to end the concept of new gods really cool really cool aside from that the fight isn't like that's noteworthy i'd give her an a nashra man the the fight with nashra is just insane having this giant monster descend from the darkness to attack you and Nashra you could just do nothing to fight against them. In general Nashra is just a complete badass. A freaky freaky fight. This floating head is uh not to be messed with. It's in between an S and an A. I'll give him a, a white angel. The white angel kind of gives me the vibe of the tyrant from Resident Evil, at least the first one. They're really freaking cool. Tough encounter and have like a really cool animation when you know it splits your character in half are oh, very cool very cool a uh, the old guardian like real talk I, I don't really get these enemies compared to all the other enemies in fear and hunger they don't really come into their own like you don't really remember them you just think oh yeah these guys the same with the uh the nameless guardian that uh, you have to fight it's just this weird pose it's, it's going i, I don't know what <laughs> i don't know what's uh, up with them they're not that interesting to be honest uh, at least in my opinion Skin Granny. I think uh, Skin Granny is gonna be a uh, an S. The fact that you see this old lady and you know something's up, you just know that something horrible is gonna happen with this grandma. Yeah, sure enough it does. This grandma just freaking unfolds into this eldritch abomination. Literally tears off your face and has like a unique sprite depending on which character she uh, does it to. It's such a cool detail such a cool detail that mirror didn't have to do but he did it's an s double-headed chromola i mean it's just chromola but with an extra head it's in the same bandwagon as chromola I I mean, i'm just gonna give it an a isaiah isaiah is a is a bastard <laughs> it's an interesting uh, story that he has with kohara but not amazing b the gaunt knight kind of strange this encounter not the most memorable or interesting in my opinion be sir seymour see i never fight sir seymour so I, I can't really say how interesting this is as an enemy from videos i've seen it can be quite a a tough fight i, I mean i guess it's a b the cave mother is a strange encounter like it, it keeps running away from you or at least flying away it's a strange one it's a strange one i can't really say it's like a great enemy b the samurai ghost or spectral assassin uh, i forget the exact name of it it's a pretty cool encounter it doesn't really do much for me i'd give it a b the guy that wants to transform into a butterfly this guy freaked me out the fight itself is a nothing burger but like you can get a really cool soul from this guy its creepiness really exceeds how much of a threat this guy is it doesn't even attack you you have to attack it i think it's cool i really like this guy a. Maybe I'm unique in that. Blight. Yeah, these weird like pterodactyl primordial enemies that you fight in the void. They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. The molded one. Again, it's this, this primordial human that hasn't been quite formed yet. That is in the green hue. It's a cool enemy. It's a cool design. I'd give him a... In between an A and a B. I, I, okay, B. B. So we have the babies, uh, the babies that try to uh, stab you in <laughs> in Mahava. Uh, these guys are a pain, but really freaking creepy. Uh, really freaking creepy. I give them an A. The uterus or uteri. Uh, these are really terrifying encounters and very uncanny. This construct made by Valtiel, which is this part biological, part mechanical mannequin that gives birth to those uh, babies I just spoke about and it comes out of the belly and tries to stab you. Oh, very creepy. I give it an A. I forget the name of these guys, but they kind of just do poison against you. Uh, they're kind of a pain. It's this scarecrow guy that 
poisons you. It's it's cool. It's a bee. The marriage between a lizard man and a yellow mage. These guys are a pain in the ass. By the time you fight them in the gauntlet, ah, oh, they're just so frustrating to deal with. They're really freaking strong because it's like the final zone. It's supposed to be like the hardest zone in the game. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I think they're pretty damn cool. I'm not sure if they're cool enough to get into the A category. I'd give them a B. Scarabs? <laughs> their face cracks me up and they can destroy your equipment. They're pretty cool. Not insane. Doesn't blow my mind. B. These are basically ghouls. Uh, B. The cave dwellers. Now I've spoken about the cave dwellers before in some of my videos and I think it's such a cool concept that you have this society or the attempts of a society in the dungeon in the most hostile place imaginable. They have like this primitive society which is kind of peaceful. At least they don't want to be messed with. I, I just love the concept of this underground society that is uh, you know trying to survive in this super harsh environment i'd give them an a the mumblers uh they kind of piss me off <laughs> to be honest like because moonless keeps biting their head and like if you destroy the head it like explodes and does like poison damage to you so yeah I, they annoy me but are they a good enemy I, I would say they're okay the red man for context the law behind this is that this is a man that has been captured by Chambara and has been tortured for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years because Chambara is a new god and uses his abilities to keep this man alive and chains him to a wall and inflicts all manner of horrible things to him. His entire body from head to toe is like burnt scar tissue. Jesus Christ. Like this game is dark. I give him an A. No, maybe an S. Maybe an S. It's the creepy sound he makes. That bumps him up to an S. The lizard men, man, these guys are kind of like bog standard lizard warrior guys that you see in a role playing game. But the ending, oh, the ending screen it gives you, Jesus Christ. It's so brutal. It's one of the most brutal deaths in Fear and Hunger. <laughs> like, it's so bad. Yeah, for that, uh, it gets an A. Uh, the Night Lurch. Ah, oh, man. Uh, don't turn your back on the Night Lurch. Ooh, oh, boy. It's a really cool enemy. I think it's inspired by the liquor in Resident Evil. It's like this blind creature that is, like, crawling around. It's a real pain in the ass to deal with. You encounter these in tight and confined hallways. Yeah, what it does to you... Ooh, there's a unique status icon just to detail what it does to your character um a <laughs> the spider dude i don't even know why these are in the game i i guess it's just a little spider that dies in one hit i think it's just to like deplete your resources and inflict poison if you don't have a way to deal with poison you're in trouble basically it doesn't really do much aside from that i don't really know why it's in the game to be honest it's the first d it's the first D. It's literally just the spider. <laughs> it's just a bog standard spider. It doesn't really add much to the game aside from just, you know, checking if you have a uh, way to deal with poison. Yellow mages, man, these guys are so unfair. Like the first time you play this game, you're just gonna get your limbs blown off and you'll have to reset. <laughs> <laughs> you either sneak past them or run straight towards them, but they're really cool as a design. I'd give them an A. The Moonless God. This is a marriage between a cave wolf, like Moonless, and a prison god. Why are these two very different entities doing the Sylvian marriage ritual? I don't know. I don't want to know. But there's quite a few of them, and I don't like it. Which I guess is good for this list. They're cool, but they're not super cool, are they? They're a B. Okay, so we have Gordon Ramsay on a bad day, also known as the Lord of the Flies. If you look at his face, it just looks like Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I guess the fights are cool. There's like a weird thing where like you can take seeds from them and grow cave moss in the cave dwellers village with their seeds. It's just very strange. They're cool. I don't think they're cool enough to be an A. I think they're a B. The Spectres. Dude, the Spectres have a unique attack that literally ages your character. If you go onto like the sprite of what your character looks like as it gets hit with the Spectres attacks, it actually gets more wrinkles on the face. Like every time you get hit with it, your character ages until the point where it just 
dies of old age. That's such a cool idea and like the attention to detail that Miro added is so cool. It's an A. The prison guard with the crossbow or the ballista or whatever. I mean it's it's fine. It's cool. It's basically just a, a variant of the prison guard. I guess it's an A. I, here's the weird thing. Like, I don't know where to put the variants of enemies. I, I guess uh, A. The Yellow King, aka the god. It's a cool fight. I, I'd give him an A. Yeah, this is the list. I'm sure people are going to thoroughly disagree with some of these placements. But yeah, this is how I see the enemies in this game. The Cave Spider. I don't know why it's in the game. It's, I always found it kind of weird. It's just like, why is it? Why is there spiders here? And at the very top, we have the goated enemies in the game. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think the best and worst enemies in Fear and Hunger is? I'll see you guys in the next video.